Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Openly Ethereum show. This is my first opposite. In, uh, please, uh, Riyad, uh, do not laugh, please. I can't, I can't carry on with that. Uh, anyway, uh, welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to Openly Ethereum show. Uh, this is the first opposite in uh, English, I think. Uh, I spoke English before in my show, but not specific. Uh, please, I, can't, I can't carry on with that. Uh, anyway, uh, welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to Openly Ethereum show. This is the first opposite in uh, English, are we? I think. Uh, that's it, that's it. Sorry about that. Uh, let's welcome our guest, uh, Riyad Al Khazraji. Welcome, Riyad. Yo, what's up, John? How's it going? How are you? Everything is all right. All right, mate. We're all right, mate. I uh, like to say hello to you and uh, thank you for inviting me over to your channel and hi to everyone else all our friends on uh, communicator and chat universal human ali brandy free thinker abu al jude and everyone else thanks for having me over thank you Riyad. uh honestly this uh, you know we're trying to to do like the uh english copy of uh, open ethereum show in arabic you know we've got uh, the opposite of 400 nearly and now we're trying to just uh, make another experience with the English. So, God help us. What do you think? Dawkins, <laughs> Dawkins help us. Yeah. Ah, so, I, think, so I, I forgot. Just I forgot one second. I think it's a good idea, and uh, the English-speaking community. I can imagine that there's so many uh, youth and second generation, third generation Arabs or Arab-speaking communities living in the United Kingdom and Europe and North America so we should also be reaching out to them they seem to be uh, you know uh, digging it in English much much better than they do in Arabic so I guess this is also a message to that other generation so yeah it is a good idea I uh, I salute you yeah hopefully you will succeed with the English uh, copy uh, I mean we, we need we need and add, uh, every language to be honest uh, not just english not just arabic we need to reach people on every language even if i could uh, speak japanese or chinese I'll... i was i was gonna suggest to you john since you are from uh, kurdish origin maybe once a week you can make a program for one hour in the kurdish language because your people are also suffering the same problem yeah that's true you know but uh, I'll try, I'll try my best, you know, I'll try my best. Now we're trying the, the English, we'll see how it's gonna go. So um, yeah. then maybe, maybe uh, one day I'll do Kurdish as well. But my Kurdish is half Arab, half Kurdish. You know? uh -huh. <laughs> we have so many words in Arabic, so I'm not sure how it's gonna go. Yeah, any, sure. any, any Kurdish people are gonna, gonna listen to me, you will laugh. I'm seriously gonna laugh of me. Anyway, uh, Riyad, uh, let's 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 just uh, go with your experience with the uh, religion. Let's talk about uh, your childhood and how how you related to religion at the time and how you grew up with this religion. Uh, I think uh, you are Muslim in your childhood, yeah. and then you just uh, got to uh, Christianity after that. Let's go yeah. from, from the beginning. As you, as you mentioned, I was uh, born in Baghdad, Iraq, and I cannot really call my family uh, Muslim, proper Muslim, like they were um, secular. So I think the most religious person I met in the family was, would have to be my grandmother, who's from my father's side. <clears throat> and uh, she was uh, what we call the Turkuman, or the Turkuman community in Iraq. So she's mostly into the Sunni sectarian Islam. So you got the Shia and you got the Sunni. The other religious person I know is my grandfather. He's my mom's father and he's a Jafari. Jafari as in Shia. Now the, 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 the vivid images that comes into my mind is like seeing posters of Imam Ali 
uh, the cousin of Muhammad sitting on his horse and holding a, a sword with two splits at the end that's written on it. Uh, uh, we, we have an insect in Iraq we call Abu Bres, uh, not Abu Bres, we call, uh, anyways, it looks exactly the same split us from the end of it. But the, they, these are the kind of, and they used to take me to Najaf and they used to take me to uh, Karbala. And I, I see the woman crying, and they're all dressed in black. They look like ninja fighters. Um, and they're all crying their eyes out with their kids and going around in circles. And and I was like, what the heck is going on? I was like only six years old, maybe seven years old. I, I mean, I, I don't understand what these people are doing in my mind because I'm so, so innocent. Um, but then when I started going to school, that's when religious education really took effect. Um, the school was, you had to study the subject of Islamic education by compulsory. Whether you like it or whether you don't like it, you still have to study. So they used to give us the Quran and they used to talk about Hadith. Um, like even the first Quran, I remember the teacher, she was a lady and she was trying to teach us to memorize, you had to take it into memory, some verses. The first uh, awful, ugly one was like, I'm like, oh, I, is she going to kill us? Or what's she going to do to us? Like, that was the f ever first Quranic verse I remember as a child or as a kid. Um, uh, I mean, I, I, I want to ask you before we uh, you go on, uh, Riyadh, uh, what 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 image of God you you got at the time when why do you humaza tin luma kulli humaza tin luma the the same experience I've got I think but uh, I couldn't think about it uh, much time but in your experience how 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 you imagine God at the time I imagined him as someone who's upset like I've done something wrong maybe. And he's like holding the stick in his hand. Come here, you mother. You know, I'm going to give it to you like real good. I'm like, what have I done? Is he, why is he feeling so angry? I felt him like an angry man who looks like me and looks like you. He has two eyes and maybe he has hair and he has a beard. And he's sitting somewhere up there. I don't know where, but we always, for some reason, we always look up to the sky. And that's the image as a child, as a kid. And then one day, I walked into my grandmother's room, my other grandmother. So I told you I have my gra my father's side, and now I'm talking about my mother's my mother's side. She's English. She's actually from uh, from Portsmouth, and she belongs to the Anglican Church, as you know, John. In England, everyone is almost Anglican. And then she had a Bible open, Bible. And I'm like, uh, I, she had pictures in it. So it's not just words black and white, but it's, it had also uh, images. And I saw an image of a guy who's dressed up in um, royalty, just like Her Majesty. And he's wearing a crown on his head. And I'm like, Nan, I, Nan, like Nani, Nani, Nan. Uh, I was talking, I was like maybe four or five years old. I said to her, who's that? <clears throat> Who's that in the picture? Because I like cartoons, and it looks like cartoons. I said, who's that? She said, this is God. What? She, God? Yeah, this is God. It's, it's, it's really true. You know, it's, it's a cartoon, you know. It's, this is God. This, this is, God. is God. I'm like, well, 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 hold on. How could the, he looks like me, and he looks like you? Is he is, is, really? And I actually believed, because I was so innocent. You know, child, children, anything you tell them, I think they believe, well, especially if it comes from a member of the family. Like if it comes from a stranger, you would be 50-50. But if it comes from somebody you trust and somebody you love, like your mother, your father, your grandparents, you you seem to believe. Like I said, like, okay, so this is God looks like the king of uh, England or the queen of England. And then I see God on the cross, you know, on the crucifix. I'm like, now what happened? Just now he was wearing a crown on his head and he looked like royalty. Now he looks like a vagabond from Sugis Shorje hanging on a, a cross. What, what, what changed all of a sudden? So then she started telling me about the crucifixion and all that BS. 
so this this is my encounter my first encounter as a as a child with i think all religions like you can say islam christianity shia and sunnah which, which is amazing uh, i just want to ask you did you have a prayed like or fast uh, when when did you start what, what age was later later that came very late as i was into 12 years old i started to fast so uh, you see what happened there was a transition john i went from baghdad to dubai in the united arab emirates and there the community is very religious more than the community that i was living in and in dubai everything is inshallah bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim like for example i tell you something the the iraqi government is secular at the at the time so religion religion was not pushed or shoved into you uh, in the secular life in baghdad for for example women were able to wear skirts shirts show their hair put some makeup you know there was a little bit of civility or civilization when i went to dubai it's like segregation between male and female even the school i went to was only for male and i couldn't understand because when i came from baghdad we were mixed you had girls and you had boys but then all of a sudden in, in dubai it started like boys on one side and girls on the other you know you're separated all, all the teachers were male like i was used to seeing a teacher who's a female now i'm seeing male and the dress code is different <clears throat> even the accent is different everything is, is different and I came to write on my textbook. You know, you have your textbooks and you, you, you want to write something or take notes. The guy who's sitting next to me, I still remember his name. His name is Ahmed Al Mu'alla. Tahayati, greetings to Ahmed Al Mu'alla. He was sitting right next to me and he said, How can you just write like this without writing in the beginning? First, you have to put Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. I said, What Bismillah ar Rahman? I'm not uh, studying religion. This is uh, mathematics. You know, look, the, the math teacher. Is talking about pi, uh, five, uh, the Gaudian uh, theory, and you're talking to me about Bismillah. He said, You have to put Bismillah. Are you from Iraq? Ah, that's why you're Shia, Rafidi. You see the Rafidi? The Rafidi, they don't believe in. Like the first time in my life, I heard Rafidi. I never knew what Rafidi is, which for some people who have no idea, this is the big uh, problem existing between the Sunni and the Shia sect. As you know, most 90% of the community in uh, United Arab Emirates are uh, Sunni. So that's when my mind started to change month after month, year after year. <clears throat> they also, <clears throat> the government, I didn't go to private schools. I was going to the public school. And in the public school, they had mosques, uh, John. The, the government spent money on building little mini mosques inside the school itself. So every Thursday, because Thursday was the weekend, hey guys, how about we skip lessons today? Let's skip science, let's skip biology, and let's go to the mosque and pray the uh, the noon prayer together. And you know, so if you imagine growing up in such um, I don't know community or environment, no doubt Islam is going to have a hold on you. And that's exactly what happened to me. Growing up as a teenager, I my you can say I was brainwashed, brainwashed, and specifically into the Sunni. Let's, let's, let's start with, with the question you 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 uh, you know on mind when you teenager. You know every teenager when it's got like 13, 14 years old. Uh, there is so many questions like what is God? We'll start with this question. How did you face these questions? I mean, uh, did you ask somebody like the clerics? Uh, and uh, what did you uh, what did they say to you? What is the answer they gave you? My uh, concept of God as a teenager was no different to the Salafi uh, propaganda or the Salafist uh, idea of God. So basically, you don't question. So as a teenager, I hardly ever asked these questions. You wouldn't believe that this guy sitting in front of you right now was a pacifist, extreme pacifist. And this is exactly what a Muslim is. A Muslim bends over. He bends over. He bends over to God and say, do what you like and do what you want. My life is a sacrifice to you. This was my concept of God. God was the supreme 
everything in the world. He created me as a human being, and he also created the jinn, not just the human beings, but there's also other unseen creatures known as jinn. And we were both created only for one purpose, and one purpose only is to worship the Almighty. We were not here to enjoy life. We were not here to have fun. Uh, we were only here to this is all we were doing five times a day and if I ever had a question I would immediately go and uh, do the uh, ovulation uh, what we call wudu with water and say like this for example <laughs> it's like a shaitan or iblis was uh, reading stuff into my mind and he's trying to distract me or something and i'm like i have to go and pray to a rak'ah uh, <laughs> go and pray to a rak'ah to god <laughs> can you believe that this is riyad al khazraji speaking it's, it's impossible i was 180 degrees very good boy very blessed like a saint almost you know what i'm saying and i'm like talking to my friend hey guys what the heck is happening in afghanistan we should be helping our brother Muslim and jihad against the Soviet Union. These mother effers, Russian communists. Have, 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 you, have you ever tried to join uh, the jihadists in Afghanistan? I wanted, I wanted to go to Afghanistan and they stopped me. They say, no, you're not going. You're too young. My father, he didn't allow me to go to Afghanistan. How, how I was are like, why are you stopping me from jihad? I want to die as a martyr. This is me when I was 15 years old. And I was praying uh, every day in the mosque. And in the mosque, I was meeting up with groups. And they are Salaf, the Salafist groups. And they were brainwashing, brainwashing like, you guys, life, this is the concept. Life has no value. Living here, eating and drinking and getting married and having kids and education and becoming someone is not important this is not what we're here for we are here for one purpose is for the sake of islam islam has to spread everybody who does not accept islam as their faith is an infidel and these people we don't give a shit about they are worse than insects after the shia first the shia and then the the animals so uh, and then if we are asked to go and fight in the name of Allah and then the name of Mo uh, Muhammad, we have to do it. This is our duty. And this is all I understood. This is all I knew. No physics, no mathematics, no uh, evolution, none of this. Zero. Absolute zero. Riyad, uh, let's, let's go next step, let's say. Um, how did you start like the doubt about Islam how what oh. questions start uh, to get in your mind that is there is something wrong let's say and uh, when I mean how and when started that it took a long time John it, it took a very long time I, I, when I st when I was 23 years old so uh, you can say all my life up to the age of 23, it was only Islam and Islam alone. But you see what happened is something very interesting happened, John, is I had to leave that environment against my will. There was the Iraq-Kuwait war in 1991, which we, we call the Gulf War, 1991. So Iraqis were no longer welcomed. We were the enemy of the state. Public enemy number one, Riyadh al-Khazraji. You have to leave. So, where am I going to go? I can't go back to Iraq because Iraq is too dangerous. And we have a war and you know how everything is so messed up. There was only one solution. I had to go to Europe. I had to go to where my grandmother is from, uh, which is the United Kingdom. So a long story, long story. By the time I made it to the United Kingdom, who did I meet? Who took me back to my grandfather again? My grandfather, the Shi'i, the, the Jafari. Now my grandfather started seeing me that I'm very brainwashed by the Sunni Salafi uh, sect. And he was like, 
how could you believe those bitches? You, can't you know that uh, Imam Ali is the true caliphate after Muhammad? Can I say words? Uh, am I allowed to say words, John? Like uh, F U C K or no, or not, or no, time, time. Whatever you like, it doesn't matter. Go on. That motherfucker Abu Bakr, let him go and fuck his sister Umar ibn al Khattab. I don't give a shit about Uthman the bastard. I'm like, hold, hold, hold. What are you talking about, Jiddu? Jiddu means uh, grand. Jiddu, take it easy. Sahaba, these are the companions of Muhammad. How could you say this about Abu Bakr? Well, this is when the first shakeup began. He gave me a book, uh, a book written by a Tunisian. His name is uh, Ahmed, uh, I can't remember, uh, Tijani, Tijani, Ahmed Al-Tijani. And he used to be a Sunni and then switched over to the Shia Ja'fari. So he wrote many nice books, books like Thumma uh, Tadayt. Uh, he wrote another book and uh, there's another famous book, it's called Al-Muraja'at. Not al murajaat by our friend uh, Ayd ibn Harb. No, different kind of murajaat. This is an old book, which is supposed to be like, a, how to say, a debate between a Shia a sheikh and a Sunni sheikh from Al-Azhar. They were writing letters to one another about, is Imam Ali truly who was supposed to be second in command after Muhammad? passed away or so this started to plant in me the first seed of doubt and that's all you want something like a breakthrough a door opened or a window opened and I'm like if you start to have doubt about Abu Bakr Umar and Uthman then you're gonna start having doubt about other things and then other things and then other things so it took a while, but then I came to the conclusion after maybe two years with my grandfather because I was living with him and he was every day giving me lecture, 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 lecture about Abu Bakr the motherfucker, Umar ibn al-Khattab, he broke the rib of Fatima because he pushed the door with his foot and Fatima was standing behind the door and the door slammed into her and broke her rib and then she was very upset with Abu Bakr because Abu Bakr took away from her the land of Fadiq. And she was asking for her inheritance from her father after he died and passed away. He said, no, I hear that the prophets of God are never to be inherited, but everything they leave is sadaqah. And then she didn't talk to Abu Bakr until she died and they buried her in secret. And then I knew that Imam Ali didn't want to, uh, what we call bay'ah, I don't know how, pleasance. He didn't want to swear oath to Abu Bakr as the new caliphate for two, no, two months or six months. Two months or six months, Abu uh, Ali was not doing the bay'ah to Abu Bakr because he disagreed with him. And then I read a book by Ali called Nahj al -Balagh. And in Nahj al -Balagh, Ali was saying, you can, yeah, if you want to say it in, in simple English, it's like it's this motherfucker Abu Bakr took it away from me, the caliphate. And he knew that I'm the one who was supposed to be after Muhammad. It's called Hadith al shiqshiqiyya in Nahj al -Balagh. I'm like, uh, what the heck is going on here? All these people that I used to believe in saints, you know, like the Catholic Church, when they look at Saint Teresa or Saint Barbara or Saint Saints, you know, these are wonderful people. These are like the illuminating stars in heaven. And then all of a sudden, the Sahaba became worse than shit. And we're talking about the Sahaba here. And then I started to read a little bit more, and I'm like, maybe this is the Shaitan. <laughs> Go and do some wudu, rakatin, and try to stay away from all this bullshit. Then in 1999, Jan came the nuclear explosion. Paltok and technology and internet started to become the thing. All uh, eyes were on the internet. Internet wasn't something popular. I was like the old school, going to a library reading a book, asking people. You had to call people. You had to take a taxi and go somewhere to ask people. There was no Skype. There was no MS, MSN Messenger. There was no Yahoo. Google only came out 2002 or 2003. There was none of that. It was the hard way, old school way of scholarship. But then the breakthrough when Paltak came up as a chat 
program on the internet. And then I started listening to a guy called Zakaria Botros. And I'm like, this Egyptian guy who's dressed in black, like men in black, here comes the men in black, <laughs> Zakaria Botros. <laughs> Uh, Riyad, Riyad, I, know, I want to ask you here, you know, just when you start doubt about Islam, why you didn't thought about uh, atheism, uh, like, you know, just you, you jump to Christianity, as I know. I mean, uh, what's the reason, there, if, if you can tell us, please? Atheism would never come into my mind, John. Believe it or not, this guy who's today the most activist, you know, I'm I'm willing to die for atheism. Uh, back then, when I was talking about that time in my life, atheism didn't even come into my mind, not even for one second. Because whatever happens, even if the religion was wrong, even if my faith was wrong, but there's no way that you're going to deny the existence of God himself. It's impossible. Because where did I come from? Where did everything come from? Where did this whole world come come from no i uh for like i don't want to be i don't want to sound rude but atheism for me was extremely stupid back in the time back in the time atheism for me was like they these guys have no brains and i'm like uh put that to one side who cares about atheism let's talk about christianity and islam it's either gonna be islam or it's gonna be christianity even even judaism yahudi i'm like no no way, no way. These people are very old, like 2000. We, we have uh, Jesus, the son of Mary, Jesus Christ, and we have Mo. It's going to be either Mo or Jesus Christ. But I like Jesus what because. About Jesus... Hindu, like. Uh, no, no. How could I worship a cow? Am I going to be worshiping the cow every day? I'm putting shit on my head because that's what they. I'm putting a red dot and push the dot on, off on off this is the hindu in my in my imagination hold on somebody who's calling okay oh that's fine Sorry. all right then just let, let's talk about your story with the, with the christianity uh, and zakaria uh yeah go on. well um i wanted to be a daria islami <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe it? Riyadh al Khazraji wants to be Da'iya. To be honest, you know, you know uh, from my experience, Riyadh, and I met so many people who, who become atheists at the end, uh, I believe it. Yeah, I believe it that some people uh, of them, even even they were, you know, want to kill themselves in sake of Islam and sake of religion. So I believe you when you, when you say, I want to be like a cleric. Uh, uh, for Islam and uh, you know all this stuff absolutely yeah I mean I can't believe today when I look back on myself just maybe 30 years ago or, or 25 years ago I'm like how how did but we'll we'll come to this later as for uh, Paul talk I started to discover not one not two maybe five to six evangelical Christian rooms and they were attacking Islam. Attack, 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 attack. And I can't believe this because where we come from in the Middle East, especially before the internet age, no one dares open their mouth and criticize Islam. And who dares, whether they're Christian, because I know in Iraq we had Christians uh, from Ash Assyrian, Assyrian, and we had. I hope. I hope just the the, the sound is alright. Yeah, I can. Can you hear me? I can hear you. You guys can hear me. Good voice. Hello. Um, Sabah Ali and Kaiser, can you hear me on the chat? You can write good voice if you don't mind. Oh, John. Uh, uh, do you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. If, I think you had a freezing, freezing on the computer. Or? All right. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I think it's okay now. Go on. 
Okay, so I was saying no one dared open their mouth and criticize Islam where I came from. Even the Christian community we had in Iraq, uh, they kept to themselves their minority group, the minority group of uh, Assyrian, Chaldeans, and all the other minority, even the Azidi. Azidi we never heard of. Uh, they're hiding somewhere in the mountain with their brother uh, Kurdistan. We never heard of them. So nobody is even allowed to criticize the Islamic faith. Now, all of a sudden, on the internet, I see Egyptian, mostly they were Egyptian, Egyptian and Lebanese. Uh, Muhammad the bastard. Muhammad, he take he, pedophile. This pedophile, he took uh, a girl who's nine years old. Um, and they started really cussing, cussing, cussing Islam, cussing Muhammad and saying so many bad things. I like, how could they? Are they just because they're sitting behind machines and depending on the internet, they think they can get away with it or they think they can say whatever they like? How dare they? And I'm like, this is it. I'm going to do my best to try and proselyze uh, to bring them over to Islam and to make them understand that they are swimming in darkness and that they are actually wrong they don't know what islam is they don't know who muhammad is and i'm gonna make them understand who he is so i started to dialogue this is one of the most most important things is for um, reason and to be illuminated is to have dialogue dialogue and debates little by little i'm like let me check and see if uh, Zakaria Botros is telling the truth or not. We have Sahih Bukhari and we have the resources. We can look it up and we can check to see if it's true. And then he started talking about, I remember Zakaria Botros was talking about uh, Ya, ya Maryam, about Maryam, Ya Ukhta Harun. And he was saying in Christianity, this is bullshit. Maryam is not the sister of. Harun. I'm like, yeah, he's right. Harun is from a different time and Harun is the brother of Moses. How could Mary, the mother of Jesus, who came 500 years after or six or 700 years after Moses, is now the, the sister of Harun? That doesn't make sense. And then another problem. Uh, what uh, Zachariah Butrus was talking about. And then Dulqarnain, when he went to a place in the east, he saw the sun setting in Al Ain Al Hamia. Now, how the hell am I going to translate Al Ain Al Hamia into English? Okay, you understand, understand, you don't understand, ask your dad. <laughs> the warm eye. You, the warm the eye. eye. <laughs> <laughs> the warm eye. <laughs> Nice one, nice one, John. Nice one. I like it. I like it. I like it. And then the, the warm eye. And what kind of eye? If you, ever, if, you, if you ever heard about the warm eye, this is the warm eye. Ladies and gentlemen, write it down. From now on, Dulkarne found the sun going down, setting on the warm eye. And then I'm like, this is also bullshit. How could the sun? which is millions of times greater than the planet Earth. Uh, rest in peace in the warm eye. It doesn't make sense to me whatsoever. And then another bullshit came up. Hi, Ahmed Harqan. Greetings to our friend. Ahmed Harqan is on chat right now. Tahiyya ilak, Habibi. Welcome, my friend, uh, Ahmed. Welcome. Uh, I, ho I hope you enjoy the show. <laughs> go, go, go on, yeah, go on. This is, this is not TV commercial. This is live show. <laughs> Anyways, after that, uh, the motherfucker, uh, uh, Shayateen, uh, what do you call them? Anyways, these uh, evil spirits. Yeah, these evil satanic spirits in heavens were all running away, shouting, help, help. There's a big comet chasing after us. Like, what's happening, guys? I don't know. God is hitting us with, with comments. The minute I started thinking about this, is this kind of, is, what is this? Man? Then I started to try and find a logical explanation to it. Is 
maybe he didn't mean it like that maybe he meant it in a different way maybe it's just a spiritual message it, maybe it's not supposed to be taken literally but then no matter what I did and no matter what I tried I just couldn't make things synchronize in a harmonious way there was always a problem and then the guy talks about everybody knows that in, in the Quran it says وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَلَا they crucify him not they killed him not but it appeared to them as such but then I know in history, especially when you read history and studies and Christianity and all the Christians, two billion Christians around the world, everyone is saying to you, Jesus died on the cross. Now, how does the Quran contradict a historical fact that somebody died on the cross? So this is another problem. And and, and, and then Ya'juj and Ma'juj, and then the, the, the stupid idiot, he built a huge dam which we call said to stop these shitheads from crossing over Yajuj and Majuj. I'm like, where is it now? We went, we have Google Map. Google Map has taken a picture of every single alleyway and street all around the world. You can even see the prostitutes standing on the side of the sidewalk. This is how effective Google Map is. There is not one split hair evidence that yeah, Juj and Majuj or the big dam that because what's so special about the big dam that Dhul Qarnain, the guy with two horns, is that what we're gonna call him? The guy with two horns. Yeah, yeah, built? I think so. I think so, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it sounds better than warm eye. So the guy with two horns who went to the warm eye built <laughs> a huge dam we call said. And this said is supposed to be there until doomsday. For those who don't know Doomsday, it's supposed to stay there and keep those motherfuckers behind until Doomsday come. Well, now we are in the year, for example, 2000, 2000 and uh, what are we now? 17, right? Yeah, <laughs> because, because, because Canada is behind always. I think we're still in 2016, John. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> it seems strange to me, you know. <laughs> we are like one million you know, hours behind. A few you. hours back. Well, this is a good answer to those stupid idiots who believe that the planet Earth is flat, which I may say Islam and Christianity, both and, and Judaism, the what we call the Abrahamic religions, they all fall into this categorical mistake that the Earth is flat. Uh, our friend Roy saying. Uh, about the uh, Zul Qarnain is uh, Alexander the Great. They think it's a theory, but they they can't really say that Alexander the Great is the same person mentioned in the Quran. So there is a possibility. It, there is a possibility that it is Alexander the Great, but we don't have enough evidence to pin down that truly Zul Qarnain is exactly uh, Alexander the Great. But there's a lot of it. it probably is. Maybe uh, it is. Yeah. Maybe Riyad, when, Maybe it is. When you heard first time this stuff, this all rubbish about Islam from Zakaria Butros, what was your reaction? And how did you shock. I was like, oh, yeah, like somebody is shocked. It's like I started putting my fingers in my ears. I don't want to hear anymore. In fact, I shut down uh, Paltak and I did uh, uninstall from have my you, computer. Have you tried to defend Islam? I tried, but I knew I knew I was failing inside. I knew I was failing. There's no chance. I'm like, no, this is not good. The only thing I was responding something unrelated, completely nothing to do with a proper answer. I was saying to the Christian, well, your book is muharraf anyways. You guys have changed a lot of shit in your book, and it's not even true. So yeah, one for me and one for you. That, that's all I can come up with. I couldn't really come with a proper answer to the questions they were throwing at me um and then this is when you know so many questions and and doubts and let's 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 take the the second stage i mean how did you uh get to christianity how did you, yeah. did you convert you know just convert to christianity how did you understand well, it and then okay jesus loves you and blah 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 you know 
Well, we call him Jesus, yeah, yeah, but Jesus. So what happened is while I was on <laughs> Paltok, I met a nice lady. Because Paltok, you get to meet a lot of people. Now, this lady, her name was Cutie Pie. So her name was nice, her voice was nice, and everything about her was nice. But there was just one little problem. She was a Christian. And she was part of the uh, the cult that was attacking Muslims on Paltok. And she used to hear me because I used to take the microphone like I'm doing now and I used to talk and de try to defend Islam. And of course, everybody was making fun of me. <laughs> this idiot, what's his name, Riyadh? <laughs> Look at Riyadh. Everybody was making fun of me. And, but she was sympathizing with me. She was like, it's okay, I understand, I know, but come, we can talk in private. So I used to go and talk with her in private. Hey, I'm like, yeah, where do you live? I live in Canada, I live in London, I live. And then it became relationship, little by little. And she's a Christian. Uh, and then at that point, she was also talking to me about all the bullshit and all the stuff that was wrong in Islam and the Quran and Muhammad. How could, she said, Muhammad, all he was ever interested in is checking out the young the young girls he's like a pedophile you know his first his first wife uh, he couldn't marry because i think he got married to her through waraka ibn nofal as a christian marriage with khadija and not he wouldn't even dare he wouldn't even try to get married to a second wife while khadija was alive but the minute khadija died <laughs> Immediately, he jumps into marrying Aisha, Hafsa. Hafsa was 12 years old. And then the famous, when imra'atan wahabat nafsaha, is like if a woman or a lady gives, offers herself to Muhammad, he shouldn't feel bad about it. He should accept. And then he got married to his daughter-in-law. And that's, a, that's a, like, a, like we say in our culture, aib, aib. He married the wife, his daughter shame. of Zaid. Zaid like shame, shame of him. Shame. Big, big, big shame on him, like you said. And even even Muslims, I tell you the truth, even Muslims think about it a lot. It's like, yeah, why did he do that? Was there was it really necessary? And by the way, Muhammad is supposed to be Khatim al Anbiya, which means he's the final of the final. He's the creme de la creme, the last prophet. Don't you have more important things to do than to go fucking around? So this, this, yeah, as you can see, little by little, she also pulled me into, she said, come to Jesus. Jesus loves you and Jesus died for you, sacrificed his life. Look at the huge difference between Jesus and Muhammad. I said, yeah, you're right. You're right. There, there is, there is a huge difference between Jesus and Muhammad. I agree especially now that I come to believe that Jesus actually died on the cross. And then she's like telling me, why do you think he died on the cross? Well, I don't know. And then she started telling me, paying for your sins. And then, you know, little by little, she started pulling me, pulling me into Christianity. Then I'm like, I fall in love. We have a romantic relationship and it's time to... Uh, the wedding the wedding comes in and i'm like okay well i i took it off because i have too many uh, fans and girlfriends on youtube and you know i'm trying my luck base <laughs> no, no no i'm kidding it's, it's because my my finger is big and this is becoming the ring is small <laughs> anyway yeah anyway so there was one problem john is i can't get married to her because she's a, a christian that in their uh, teachings there are not the, the ladies are not allowed to get married to anyone who's from outside the faith I had to join the faith in order to marry her you know what I'm saying so I thought about it and then I'm like yeah maybe I have to marry maybe I have to convert to Christianity and just as an excuse, not because I want Christianity or not because I believe 100% Christianity, but I just want to get married. So she's like, uh, yeah, do it because my parent, her parents are very conservative, muhafadin, her parents, and they wouldn't allow it, you know. I also had to lie in the beginning. I had to say that I'm Assyrian. You know, I even tried to, to throw a few words like, Shlam Allah, 
Dachi wheat. Mariat Barakhloch. And I'm sorry, trying to copy the the Assyrian which, because they have a different language. Just so that they want to believe that I'm a Christian. And then I went to the Catholic Church because they're Catholic. So I went to the Catholic Church. I, you know, I was baptized. I was confirmed into the church. I had to start learning about. They have courses every Saturday about the faith, teaching you about the Bible, uh, the New Testament, and little by little, little by little, I actually started to believe it. There's another, uh, you know, this is a second problem now. I got out from Islam, which was a uh, garbage, like we say. Now I'm gradually, little by little, falling into a different kind of garbage without me even realizing it because my brain was shut. I want to ask you, uh, Riyad, how, how deep you get into, into uh, Christianity? I mean, how deep you did believe? How did you, how deep uh, you just read uh, their book, uh, books and stuff like this? And how deep you become a Christian, real Christian? Well, after two years for after marriage, I'm really, because she prays a lot. My wife, she prays, she goes to the church. She even fasts. They have also fasting in the Catholic Church, unlike unlike some other Protestant uh, churches. And she was a, she's a good lady, very good lady. And I'm like, I need to learn more. I need to get involved more in, into Christianity. And for me, John, to tell you the truth, it was a good change. Because Christianity is different. It's not like Islam. You know, there's no more talk about killing. You know, there's no more talk about jihad. There's no more talk about infidels. Well, there is infidels, but in a different uh, flavor. I think, I think the uh, jihad and, and the blood killing, stuff like this, the, the only thing separate Christianity of Islam, you know. This, yeah. this, this the only thing is, is, is better. But yeah. the other stuff like the superstitions is same rubbish. Well, same rubbish, because now I'm, I'm starting to believe if, if I'm not really a believer in Jesus, I'm going to go to hell. And they talk about the same thing. They also talk about hell. Believe it or not, the Catholic Church also talks about progratory. Progratory, when you come to study it and understand progratory and the Catholic teaching, is no different to Al-Barzakh and Adab Al-Qabr in the Islamic teaching. Very, very similar. You know, so they try to scare people scare people into subduing into bowing down into saying yeah okay whatever it's scaring 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 be scared always and be frightened always and be tied up it's kind of being tied up as well um but then i'm like okay now what i want to do is uh i have to study the bible properly I don't want to just listen to people talking, especially when you go to the church on Sunday, they talk a lot, but it's just talking, blah, 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 blah. They're trying to brainwash, brainwash, brainwash. But I'm like, no, I want to, I want to study Christianity in an academic way. I want to go to the university and I want to really study it in a scientific way. Okay. So ac academic way. And <clears throat> Oh, this is where the this is another nuclear bomb explosion in my life because once you start studying the Christian texts and history and what we call theology, theology in Arabic is lahut, you start to discover all the human aspects that played the everything is shaped by us, by our own imagination by our yeah, well, it's made up it's it's made up by us it's made up by humans and they had the uh took you to to study like uh, in a scientific way to study christianity how long takes you three uh, three years three wow. years and, uh, this is uh, what we call bachelor or baccalaureate bachelor i can't I, to, be, to be honest i can't believe someone like give from his life three years to study such a rubbish i mean yeah i'm, I'm garbage yeah. Yeah, yeah i wasted i wasted uh, i wasted three but you know john in a way it helped me to become who i am today this is the only good thing that 
if it wasn't for that study, I would be also a different guy now. I would be someone who has no knowledge about Christianity, someone who hears about Christianity. And maybe this might bring us into another topic. Or There are a lot of people who think they know Christianity, but they don't really know anything about Christianity or Judaism. And there's a very strong relationship between the two faiths, uh, Judaism and Christianity. If Jesus himself and all the apostles were Jews, anyways. So you're not like talking about from Afghanistan or Bangladesh. They're actually Israeli. So <laughs> there's a strong relationship between the two faiths. Riyad, when you study uh, Christianity, what are the main things like you find it uh, surprising for you? I mean, a lot of things, John. A lot of things. Like, let's start with the text, for example. We do not have the original copies of uh, the evangelical writings, the Bible itself. Like, the letters, like, for example, there are 12 letters of St. Paul. Only seven of them, seven out of 12, they think it's authentic. They think that Paul actually wrote it. And all the others are pseudo Pauline, we call it. Pseudo Pauline, which is. Uh, people who wrote in the name of Paul because Paul was an authority. So they, they used his name to try and convey a message to their people and brainwash them. Uh, this is one, one problem. The other problem is uh, the Bible, uh, according to Luke, uh, John, Matthew. First, we, did, we don't even know who wrote it. Is it really John? Is it really Matthew? Is it really Luke? Is it really Mark? Because there is no one said, this is my name. I'm writing the Bible for you. No one ever mentions their actual identity. And the other problem, it came very late. So, for example, Jesus is supposed to have passed away when he was 33 years old. So you can say 33 common era or miladi, 33 common era. And the, uh, the writings be began a much, much later stage, like 50 years after. Imagine you're born and then you're 50 years old and that's when they start writing about Jesus. Paul, for example, the first guy who started writing about Jesus, never mentioned, not even one miracle. Like all the miracles you hear about Jesus, like he walked on defying all the laws of physics and walking on water or bringing dead people back to life or healing the sick. He doesn't mention this. He doesn't even come near it, not even once. For example, who can deny that you know, the huge big story? Like if you're buying the newspaper like the Daily Mail or whatever, headline, the headline, Jesus, baby Jesus born from the Virgin Mary, the miraculous birth. Can you believe it, John, that Paul never mentions it? He never talks about Jesus his Lord and his master was not born from a virgin. He doesn't even come near it. And then when he talks about the resurrection, because in uh, a few days from now, they're going to be celebrating Easter. And that's when uh, basically Jesus as a Christ is supposed to have come back, resurrected from the dead. My daughters forced me to buy some uh, eggs. You know? Eggs, uh, eggs. <laughs> And a bunny rabbit and kinder surprise maybe the chocolate well that's the culture but basically um, if i go on and on and on there's a lot of information all i can tell you john is it's it's man-made this is my this is not only my conclusion this is the conclusion of the vast majority including christians christians who are honest christians who are academic you know christians who are um, spend all their life studying the Bible and studying Christian history, they all uh, admit that it is man-made. We do not know who the real Jesus was. Okay, this is one thing to say that maybe there's a real character in history. His name is Jesus of Nazareth. But we cannot say today in the 21st century, we cannot say that we know exactly who this guy was, what he did, what he taught. We don't even know how what happened to him after they crucified him. Some people even say, John, that they threw him to the dogs because that's what they used to do. Yeah, yeah. There is so many stories like uh, someone being uh, crucified and stuff like this. Uh, 
so many stories, not just uh, in the Middle East, there is in the Far East, uh, everywhere. What, what, what do you make of, of them? I mean, did you hear uh, of them uh, at the time? Can you repeat your question? Uh, of uh, I mean, There is so many, uh, like the uh, uh, cheeses uh, oh, story, yes. oh, yes. in so many cultures, I mean, mm. in Far East, in Apollonius. Apollonius, yeah. Apollonius of Tiana is a famous historical character who happens to live in the very first century uh, of Christendom. And he had 12 followers. He healed the sick. He spoke about the kingdom of God. He was crucified. He was raised on the third day and he went up to heaven. Doesn't that sound like Jesus Christ of Christianity to you when you hear it? But we're not talking here about Jesus. We're talking about Apollonius of a little place called Tayana nowadays in, Tur in Turkey, in Turkey. And uh, it's also a historical fact. There's many other characters who are born and die uh, and dead messiahs. And even when you like the Horus of Egypt, who precedes Horus and Isis, not Isis, Daesh, Isis, the mother of Horus, in the Egyptian uh, uh, culture and it used to be a cult uh, many thousands of years before Jesus he also was killed and he also was brought back and then he became the Lord of the uh, the dead uh, very similar um, titles given to these other lords was also given a few years ago they discovered um, Syria Assyrian um, from the Assyrian civilization in Syria in a place called Ogarit. They call it the Ogaritic texts. And it talks about the Lord Baal. And the Lord Baal, who had uh, competition and fought against the Lord Mot. Mot is the Lord of death. Maybe that's, maybe that's where the Arabic word Mot, which means death, comes from. And of course, Baal dies. But then Baal, after a, a while, comes back to, comes back, he resurrects back to life again. And this is 2,000 years from the Ogaritic text before Jesus, before the time of Jesus. So the idea of dying and rising gods, we have the Lord Tammuz. Tammuz is one of our uh, Mesopotamian old stories in, in, in uh, present-day Iraq. And Tammuz was also killed. And after the long story short, he was also resurrected back to life again. And uh, Tammuz uh, is even Riyad, mentioned uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, thank you, Riyad. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we'll take uh, one call from uh, our brother Roy. Roy, uh, go on. Do you hear us? Roy? Uh, yeah, but, but it, uh, I, I can't hear you well, John. Uh, uh, we hear you okay. I mean, I mean, if you can just uh, speak loud, to hear you much better. Uh, okay, okay. Um, um, uh, first of all, um, thank you, thank you very much for having me. Um, it's been a long time, and I'm very happy to be to be on the show again. Um, uh, first thing I want to say, like this is a great idea, like to have some videos in English, and uh, because we have a lot of brainwashed people around the, the, the globe. Uh, people in, in, in Pakistan or India or outside the Middle East who are completely brainwashed by this evil religion. And uh, the reason I'm saying uh, evil religion is because I am myself, I'm from the Middle East, I'm from Syria. And um, to me, Islam is the greatest crime and sin ever committed by man against um, um, people in the Middle East or against humanity, actually. Islam is the, the evil in the name of God, and um, the problem today with with uh, with with uh, Muslims is like uh, a, as a Muslim person, any Muslim person cannot actually um, peacefully coexist with any other human being on Earth as long as he or she embracing this religion. Even the so-called um, the peaceful Muslims, um, we see when any terror attack occur. Um, um, we don't see that them actually stand um, against those attacks as a religious group, and because they believe that actually 
that, as, as we know in Quran, for example, in Al Amran, um, uh, ayah number 65, um, God say in Arabic, uh, In English, it's like, and as for those who disbelieved, I will punish them with a severe punishment in this world and the hereafter, and they will have no helpers. And Muslims do believe in that, and that's the, the, the biggest problem that we, we, we have today, actually. Um, Muslims need to actually be, um, understand that this religion uh, was created uh, by some uh, pagans lived in the desert, and we can't, and hopefully we will not continue embracing this evil religion. I just want to ask you, uh, Roy, do you... Uh you think it's important to explain Islam to all, all the world? I mean, uh, there is so many people who really, they don't know what is Islam. But just they, they say Islam is a religion of peace, religion of peace, that's, that's the only thing they know. And uh, we know, me and you, we know that is, is only propaganda, Islamic propaganda. How, 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 and, and, it is important to explain Islam to all the world. Of course it is, John. And uh, as I said, especially people who live uh, outside the Middle East, like I myself lived in, in Syria, I lived in a Middle Eastern society, and I know what kind of mentality, um, uh, I, know, I know exactly um, how evil this religion is. Um, unfortunately, people outside the Middle East, they don't know um, um, you know, I've met people in, in um, uh, like Amir was saying, like he lived in Dubai, and I and I and I, I, I lived in Dubai for, for a long time, and I met a lot of people from Pakistan or India, and and those people they believe in the religion blindly. You know, they, they don't know, um, uh, they they have no idea what they're talking about. You know, I met some some Indian guys, and I was like, why do you embrace Islam? Why are you Muslim? And they simply just go there because Islam is the true religion by God created, and we need to follow it. You know, be like, come on, man, really? Like, just give me more reason. Why do you believe in this religion? Can Can and you repeat it, like, please? Quran, right, right, that, right, right, um, right. Uh, God will, uh, you know, help us all, and God will. Come on, man, really? Like, they have no idea what's happening. Yeah. They are completely brainwashed. And 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 you know, like I watched some videos for like people like Hamza Yusuf. One of the the, the, the um, Americans who become, he's in America who become a Muslim, and the way he talk about Islam and how peaceful this fucking religion is, it's not motherfucker. Stop telling this to people. You know, like fuck you, dude. Really. That's true. Uh, I thank you very much, uh, Roy. Thank you very much for uh, being in the show. And to be honest, that was just like a little strange for me now speaking in English and first time we're doing uh, English opposite. So uh, I hope all of our friends will forgive us for the, any mistakes happen with us. Thank you very much, Roy. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Thank Thanks. you. And thank, thank you, Amir. Have a good day, guys. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Amir, uh, Riyadh, uh, Let's let's talk about the the, 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 the third step toward the uh, atheism. How 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 we become atheist? Like I was explaining, first uh, the second shock. So the first shock was Islam. The second shock was Christianity. I would just like to say hi to all my friends, if you don't mind, John. There's like uh, uh, bass back. Uh, good to see you, dude, and Kaiser Radi, uh, Goddess Athena, Mr. Black, what happened to Mr. White, <laughs> and Nabi, nice to see you all. Uh, yeah, so the second shock was um, Christianity. Now, although my wife is a believer, uh, by the way, my wife, and she's still a believer, like, can you imagine all the videos I made? I, I respect her for that. I have to, like, take off my hat out of respect to my wife that... She knows I'm an atheist. She knows I turned away from religion. And she knows I'm also attacking her Lord, uh, Jesus Christ, on on um, YouTube. But nevertheless, there is an understanding between us. I told her I cannot change. This is me. This is how I am. And I respect you for who you are. 
but let's not bring religion between between us let's leave it I speak uh, on YouTube this is my own world and you do whatever you like you want to go out and talk about Jesus and bring the people I uh, do what you like you have your freedom and I have my own freedom but I really respect her but but yeah some people think that my wife is an atheist no she's not an atheist she's a believer in Christianity in Jesus so that's my private life now talking about atheism is now after I'm like done with Christianity is like now what am I gonna do now where do I go you know I don't believe in Judea of course I'm not gonna by the way I want to tell you something and not many people pay attention to this is once you demolish one faith within the chain of the Ibra they call it the three Abrahamic faiths you have Judaism and Christianity and Islam once you demolish only one of them before Islam let's say you demolish Judaism automatically you have demolished Christianity and Islam automatically like some people say Riyadh why don't you pay too much attention on Islamiyat for example why don't you talk about Qatham why don't you talk about Sahih al-Bukhari? Why don't you? I'm like, I don't need to because I know and I want to show you that the Christian faith is X and the Jew and the Jewish faith is also put an X. Scratch it out. And if you scratch out Judaism or Christianity, automatically you have demolished. Let me give you an example, John. No one in the academic studies believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. If you go to any academic professor in college and talk to him about the fact that Jesus was born of a virgin in Bethlehem, they they will they will shake their heads like this, and they wouldn't know what you know. They would say, "Please go. I don't have time for this nonsense. You know, I, I have more important things to do." None of them believe in the virgin. That the Quran mentions. The virgin now is it because they don't like to believe in it or is there reasons behind of course there are academic reasons behind disproving the virgin miraculous birth we're not just saying that because we want to say no there are reasons and we have to study it we have to talk about it we have this takes many 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 uh, sessions so so that's one example the other example for example uh, the Quran doesn't believe that Jesus was crucified Unfortunately, most uh, academic professors in Christianity believe that there was a character, Jesus maybe, that was really crucified. He, somebody was killed on the cross. So the Quran cannot deny it and say, wa ma wa ma so That's another mistake. You know, mistakes about uh, in, the, in the Quran, uh, when they say that Jesus created figurines that looks like birds from mud, and he blew in and the birds started flying you have that stupid don't know what you want to call it in the Quran and this has no meaning in when you study Christianity or you study another thing the Quran says uh, who the fuck is Uzair? I looked at everybody I asked all the professors I'm like guys it, even the Jewish people themselves the Jews did you guys, did your ancestors at any point worship a guy called Uzair? And did you ever say that Uzair is the son of God? Like, impossible. No such thing at all. Where the hell did Muhammad bring this? And then another problem in, in the Quran is like, there's supposed, supposedly there is a verse that says, Yati min ba'di nabiyun ismahu Ahmed. Absolute bullshit. There is no such thing in the Bible. Even in the Apocrypha, for those who don't know the meaning of Apocrypha, these are uh, biblical writings that did not make it into the Canonic Bible. So the Bible I have here is called the Canonic Bible, al -Qanuni. These uh, the, the scripture that is in here was gathered in the year 325 over the authority and supervision of Constantine, the Emperor of Rome. But then they decided which verses are going to make it into the book and which verses they're going to leave out of the book. The ones that they left out of the book are called the Apocrypha. And even in the Apocryphal text, you search and you search and you search and there's not one mention of 
يأتي نبي من بعده اسمه أحمد. This is a big joke. It does not exist. And then somebody comes to you from the Muslim like Ahmad Didat or this motherfucker. I'm telling you, man, Islam is the religion of peace. What's his name? Zakir Manyuk. And Zakir Manyuk says that the uh, Paraklete, Parakletos in Greek, the Paraklete is Muhammad. Uh, sorry, excuse me, John. Excuse me, everyone. I really have to respond. Thank you. Thank you, Riyadh. Zakir Naik is Zakir Banyuk, as you said, you know, you never miss the target, uh, to be honest. Uh, we have we have our one call, Andy. I'm not sure if Barandi is still Barandi. He, he should become vodka or whiskey now. <laughs> Barandi. Uh, you hear me? Yeah, uh, we hear you. Uh, okay. Hi, greetings for everyone uh, and especially for uh, your guest. Uh, friends uh, I didn't change I still who I am I'm still atheist and I'm still friendly <laughs> and, you're, you're uh, supposed to be vodka by now uh, no I don't like it for because the fucking communist <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I just want to talk about something I have a similar story how uh, Prince had, what uh, how Prince had uh, is Christianity Christianity and the attack what started to going uh, against Islam and I think when the politics started yeah around two, 2003 2004 it was the highest members in this uh, politic channels it was the Christianities who attacking Islam I was one of them really and yeah, I try to defend my fucking faith, <laughs> my garbage faith. Oh, I grow up, and so I start to reading the Bible. I start to read uh, the Old Testament, but in different way. I believe from my way how I grown as a Muslim. I believe these books are been manipulated. Uh, I don't know. It's not the word that God how sent them to us. Some evil people change these things so i read it with open mind i read it too i want to characterize this shitty books because i don't believe they are holy books so once you open your mind when reading this shitty books you became like open-minded you open your mind you see how shitty and specific this fucking books are so once again you read your own book you believe this is your book the holy book what you are really believing in you feel it's you feel the similarity between these books and you see how shitty is this book also in this step you will leave your religion no way about it so i encourage this two person and sometimes you see me i defending islam over christianity and sometimes i defending christianity over islam because i want to encourage these people and I'm sure this play was That's a good idea, you know. It's, it's, it's good game, you know, you play with it. And no, no, I just, uh, because, like, I see something they doesn't see. So when I defending, uh, like, Christianity coming and saying shit about Islam, and he's saying, uh, oh, your prophet is bullshitting us, he, he pour a water from his fingers. That's I'm fucking believing. Use your fucking brain, you garbage. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, you see, they are believing. It's Jesus take a bread and he feed the whole fucking village. <laughs> it's like a fucking you are village. <laughs> and and, and Jesus like, flies, you know, just you know, both stories are you know bullshit. Like uh, Muhammad flight on donkey and. Uh, <laughs> 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 and Jesus fly, fly on by himself. I'm, I'm not sure how. You know, it's, it's like uh, Jesus. I, it's, Jesus I'm was speechless. Speechless. Muhammad had to use Muhammad had to use a donkey to go up to heaven, but Jesus just floated like an ascensor, like when he's inside the lift. Barandi, 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 just Barandi. You want to hear uh, uh, Riyadh? What he's saying? No, oh, sorry. Go on, go on. Sorry for the interruption. I was just saying that Muhammad had to use a donkey, like you said, uh, Barak, in order to fly up to heaven. Uh, but Jesus, he flew as well. He also flew special uh, first class. That's the only difference. Jesus first class and Muhammad economy. <laughs> <laughs>
Sorry. That's a good one. Go on, Barandi. I, I didn't hear what he said. He said, he said, he said uh, Muhammad uh, flied on donkey, but Jesus uh, had got special offer, like he was uh, first class without donkeys anyway. I, I heard some Christians, if he can correct me, he flew by a cloud. He used the cloud to the cloud. take off. He's, oh, he's that's coming nice back, on his second coming, Jesus is going to be on the cloud. And not only that, there's something in Christianity called the rapture, al-ikhtitaf. He's going to take all the Christian believers and they're going to be floating all on the clouds. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Uh, then going to rain, Christian. It's going uh, <laughs> Christian. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you. Thank you, Barandi. Th thank you very much, Barandi. Thank Thank you. Thank you for Thank your you call, much. and uh, I hope we'll we'll, we'll do that again and again. This uh, this kind of show, to be honest, I'm a little a little bit like uh, uh, I'm not sure how to explain it. You know, is something strange for me, but I think we'll get used to it. Hopefully. Thank I, you. I hope for you. By the way, uh, John. For everyone, man. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brandy. Thank Brandy, Brandy. Thank you, Brandy. Man, John, you, you're making me talk the same way. I say I call him Barandi now. Brandy. His name is Brandy. I was gonna Brandy. tell you, <laughs> Barandi. I was gonna Brandy. tell you something. Uh, for those for those who don't know, in the Old Testament, there are two famous, very very famous personalities, prophets, that also flew economy class to heaven. Not just Jesus, and not just Muhammad. Have you ever heard of the Prophet Achnuch? Uh, Have, you, Have you ever heard, heard of the Prophet Elisha? So you have the Prophet Elisha, he was walking with his friend, and all of a sudden he saw chariots, what we call Arab, Hantur, uh, Hantur. He, he saw Hantur with two horses coming down from heaven. On They took him and they flew away. Bye bye, see you later, Elisha. This is written in the in the Torah. This is not a hadith. This is not. This is actually in the Torah. So um, yeah, oh, everybody yeah. seems let's, to be flying. Let's take. Uh, we have about like uh, fifteen minutes left, or less uh, than fifteen minutes. Um, talk about the the future of uh, atheism, future of uh, atheism in the Middle East. Let's say. How how do you, uh, how do you see the the young people now in the Middle East? How they uh, they react into us, uh, for example, in the in the YouTube as we are atheists explaining Islam. Uh, let's let's speak about them and how they react into to us. How they understand in Islam and how do we do now uh, in in our shows, in Arabic shows. I mean, mm. I just want to say that the. Uh one of the main reasons that brought me into atheism was uh, our professor Richard Dawkins. Reading his book, The uh, Illusion of God, Wahm al was one of the main reasons that brought me into atheism and also getting to understand for the first time in my life what the true meaning of evolution is, Darwinian evolution. So after understanding these two things, I was very happily to become finally a free person uh, an atheist as for our shows what we're doing and what you're doing uh, brother john through this channel which is um, come out with your atheism and announce to the whole world that you're an atheist is basically shout out shout out your atheism it is uh, truly like you know what yesterday i don't know who wrote, somebody wrote to me a message and said thanks to you um, I was a Salafist and I was a Wahhabi Muslim and I agreed totally with Daesh, ISIS in Syria and Iraq. But then after listening to a few um, episodes on your channel and some other free thinkers channel, I became finally a free person. I no longer believe in superstition and I no longer believe in that dark religion called Islam. And that was like, because you know, sometimes, John, we get frustrated. We get a lot of negativity. In fact, let me tell everyone that John, my brother, and myself, we get more 
negative messages then we get positive if any positive message but these positive one single positive message like the one i had yesterday who told me i left islam and now i'm no longer a stupid idiot but now i'm a free liberal person i'm like yeah that's the worth of it that's why i'm spending my time on youtube and talking to these people and it is and our message is being heard by the youths in the middle east and i can see a reaction can you believe it john that when i go into my youth i think maybe you'll have the same effect if you go into your youtube channel and there's a there's a portion where you look at the analytics analytics of youtube and you can see the geographical map which countries are the most countries that are subscribed to your channel believe it or not they're from saudi arabia believe uh, it or not. yeah you're right uh, saudi arabia and uh, egyptian you know all over the arab world most exactly. of the, 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 the percentage, high per percentages uh, from uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, Egypt, you know. Exactly. So I'm like, this is exactly where we want our message to be conveyed. We want people who are living in the heart of the problem. Like, I went to visit Saudi Arabia and I saw how backward they are. They're like still living in the, not like, they are actually john still living in the middle ages you study about the middle ages in europe it's exactly the same now in saudi arabia you would see people drinking piss from camel camel piss bowl uh, al i like to say hello to professor uh, kifah the free he's uh, saying hi on chat hello professor kifah good to see you my friend um yes so basically uh, we are planting the seeds john in the middle east my country iraq is devastated and destroyed and syria is also destroyed by whom by the islamists by uh, anyone who takes the interpretation of the quran and the hadith literally because you see i liked something i heard about sam harris i think everybody knows about sam harris so Sam Harris lately has been focusing a lot on Islam and a lot of people were attacking him <clears throat> by saying, well, I think you are generalizing too much, Sam. It's like you can't say the whole of Islam is dangerous. Maybe a portion because they see ISIS, they see Al-Qaeda. They think that only a portion of Islam is dangerous. But he's saying, no, you have to understand the text. You have to understand the Quran. The Quran gives you a direct obligation to kill the infidels. Anyone who doesn't believe in Islam, anyone who doesn't believe in Muhammad is automatically classified as a kafir, zindiq, mushrik, uh, entre parenthese, infidel. So there is no mercy. There is no hope. Even when I spoke to a Muslim, I said to him, I am living in Canada. Am I at peace? He said, well, if we had a proper caliphate, Dawla Islamiyya, Khilafa Islamiyya, we will be introducing you to Islam, Da'wah. And you have two options. Either you accept or you refuse. It's like the mafia. You know the mafia, John, when they, I'm going to make you an offer we can't refuse. And you can't review, you can't say no to them because when you say no to them, they're going to get you. They're going to start blowing up stuff. They're going to start flying planes into your buildings. Oh, I guess all you need to do today is just switch on the news and listen. And you see for yourself, every single day, there's a piece of shit Muslim blowing himself up and killing all the other people. Every single day. So I, so I salute you for what you're doing, John. Uh, thank you. Uh... We are now, uh, you know, just we see this uh, terrorist uh, doing every day, like uh, uh, this explosion and uh, killing people uh, everywhere in this world. I mean, like Europe, uh, London, uh, Stockholm, everywhere. Uh, soon gonna be in Canada. I don't, I don't want, wish to uh, to have well, it's Canada. Happened. It, happened it happened in Ottawa. It's happening. Okay. In Ottawa, I think it was last year, some idiot. Ah, there's two incidents in Canada. 
there is one guy from Quebec, John, and he's you know what Quebec is a, a province, and they speak French, the French speaking province in in uh, Canada, and this guy Quebecois, Quebecois Christian, well not really Christian, but you know, uh, let's just say Westerner, and then he was introduced into Islam. He changed 180 degrees within 24 hours. Suddenly he became a Muslim. He started growing a beard. He started taking pictures with his finger. I don't know why they like to point. It's like saying this to, or they're using that finger, you know. And then all of a sudden, he drove a car into police officers, Quebec police officers. This is now the new fashion, guys, by the way. They're driving vehicles. This is the new model. This is the new fashion. And he killed many uh, police officers in Quebec because they are infidels. This happened only only uh, two years ago. And then last year, some idiot maniac who's also a Muslim from these ex-Soviet republics or Chechnya or Uzbekistan or Uzkharistan, he went to the parliament in Ottawa, taking a gun, looking for whom? He was looking for Stephen Harper. That's before before Justin Trudeau. And he wanted to kill the Prime Minister of Canada because he said, well, let's just skip all the little people and go to the big boss, the president of the infidels himself. And he wanted to kill him, a Muslim. Uh, I have last question, uh, Riyadh. Uh, what are you going to say to those people who, who believe that uh, and always say that uh, Islam is a religion of peace. I mean, I mean the European people who don't know Islam and just repeating that Islam is a religion of peace. What do you, what have, you, what you want to say? To them? I, I just ask them one simple question. I say, dear friends, those of you who don't know anything about Islam, all you need to do is ask the Muslim, what do you pray? What do you say obligatory? Obligatory, what do you say in your five times prayer a day? Surat Al-Fatiha. And in Surat Al-Fatiha, they have to say, غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. And that basically is addressing all, whoever, any human being who doesn't believe in the Islamic faith is one of those valin. He's actually praying against you every single day, five times a day and calling you names because the Quran is teaching him so. And that's just a little tiny example. And then all you need to do in addition is to go back and look at the history of Islam. Can you name uh, all apart from Indonesia? Uh, Indonesia is the only exception. But all the other 99.9% .9 of the geographic, they went all the way from Mecca to Spain and from Spain to China. Doing what? How did the Islam faith, did, was it spread by, by peace? Or was it spread by the edge of the sword? Had the safe. Aslam, Taslam. And then when I start talking to them about these things, fight those who do not believe in the Prophet and the, and the later days. Uh, I don't know how to say fitna in English, but it's something like, you know, uh, the warm eye. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, fu it's funny warm eyes the, the 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 sun goes in the warm eye anyway the warm eye. okay uh Riyad, uh thank you very much Riyad. what is your message to uh let's say the believer and the and the atheist atheist thank you abdullah he says uh, fitna is chaos yeah that's right chaos chaos i advise the uh, shabab the youth please read there's not nobody else can do it for you you can only do it for yourself read but don't read garbage material material read academic stuff things that are actually approved upon by academia read those books they're made available to you for free on google pdf you go to your nearest library the internet which has given us such a beautiful gift for free on the internet read read about the history of religion read about how religion came to be read about those characters muhammad jesus moses what exactly were they what did they do what did they offer us and then i wanted to focus on science especially 
evolution and Darwinian evolution because once and this is my hypothesis this is my theory anyone any person who really understands and gets to interact with evolution with his eyes shut and automatically will say all everything we've read everything what they call scripture is man-made Adam human being Adam could not have had no mother and no father Jesus impossible for him to be born without a father from and from a virgin and this is also another mystery his mother is a virgin and it, it, it will really break down everything you, you actually thought was a scripture holy text in, in that book and it, with one shot just by understanding evolution you're gonna be shooting down Judaism Christianity and Islam in one shot that's why everybody uh, from these uh, religions and faiths they hate evolution they always attack 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 Darwinian evolution because they know how dangerous it is and then I want you to read about cosmology and science 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 ca chemistry physics and most importantly quantum physics physical chem this will be an eye-opener this will really demolish all the classical logic that we used to believe in um, and of, of course uh, this is my message to you read study investigate do not be a pacifist do not believe everything you hear and just look at the world around you and see how much devastation and, and biology see how much uh, darkness has been caused by religions and that's it all you need to do is just be smart use your brains and there's no no one else can do it for you we're only helping you but you have to help yourself of course of course uh, Riyadh. Uh, thank you very much Riyad, and thank you very much uh, my friends uh, i hope this opposite uh, like uh, is a beginning for english copy of uh, openly atheist and i hope to do this uh, program every week weekly maybe if there is any uh, friends or anyone want to be in the show uh, i welcome them any one just to be atheist not uh, any other uh, uh, stuff like uh, muslim or uh, christian or uh, just only for atheist so uh, i welcome anyone who want to be in the show uh, just uh, uh, message me and I will reply to you as as soon as I can. Thank you very much, uh, Riyadh, and thank you very much for everybody who was with us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for thank having me, and you. thanks for that opportunity, and thanks to all my friends. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.